Um, so let's start with the background to this, which is Thames Water is the UK's biggest uh, water provider. One in four people rely on it, but it has a mountain of debt, £14 billion of debt, around 10% of which uh, becomes due at the end of this year. A bond matures at that. That's one of the reasons why the company has been attempting, we understand, to raise around a billion pounds from its shareholders, which uh, include a couple of very big pension companies, one in Canada, one here, the University uh, Pensions Fund, looks after lecturers and the like, as well as a couple of sovereign wealth funds, Abu Dhabi and China. Uh, that may explain why yesterday afternoon, completely unexpectedly, its chief executive, Sarah Bentley, resigned. She was well into a turnaround plan, she, as she called it. She'd been talking about it publicly just a couple of weeks ago. Did not feel like a planned uh, departure. She's faced a lot of pressure over the size of her remuneration. Says she wouldn't take a bonus, but she was taking a reportedly massive pay packet north of £1.5 million. Pounds. Huge public disquiet, particularly over the issue of sewage discharges. Uh, now, we understand the government is concerned less about uh, what's being pumped into the rivers than the money that may or may not be in Thames's control. So, discussions, contingency plans, at an early stage, we understand, around a special administration, as it's called. You'll remember that Bulb, the big energy provider, uh, was put into special administration rather than allowing it to collapse. What does the special administration allow? It allows uh, the government, effectively, to underwrite the company, to keep it going, to ensure that service remains uh, provided to customers, water coming into homes and sewage going out in the other direction without interruption while a buyer is found and a rescue package is put together. And we've had a statement from the government this morning, a government spokesman. I'm afraid I can't see all of it, but uh, it says that this is effectively a matter for the company and its shareholders. So a response initially, it would appear, and I would like to bring you more of it, uh, it would appear the initial response is that this is a matter for Thames, but of course it's a huge issue for the government and a huge issue for the water regulator off what and they have been in uh, number 11 or certainly somewhere meeting the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt, this morning. This meeting was called with off what the water regulator, off COM, the communications regulator, governs broadband and the like communications, and off GEM, which, as we are familiar, looks after the energy market as well as the Financial Conduct Authority and the Competition and Markets Authority. All of them, the regulators, ostensibly the reason for it was the cost of living the Chancellor looking to remind them, uh, perhaps for public appearance as much for internal communications as anything, uh, to ensure that companies, as prices begin to fall, uh, a, they are, those price falls, as inflation eases, are passed on to customers. Uh, off what? It's a, a timely meeting that the regulator should be in there, given the attention really very squarely on the water industry this morning. And therein lies the challenge of a privatised water industry. If you want to deliver value to customers and keep bills down and allow companies to take a profit from a market which, in fact, there isn't a great deal of competition. You can't choose who provides your water. Well, ultimately, you are going to face a question about how much can be invested to improve infrastructure, particularly around sewage. And that's the challenge. That's why so many water... All the water companies have such enormous amounts of debt. Thames Water has got a flood of it. The question is whether the company will go under.